Well, hi, friend. Rachel Maines here, and thanks for tuning in to The Corner Cafe. Today's show is a special episode with some past radio broadcasts where I was on The Good News with Angie Austin. And if you don't know already, I am the operations manager for KLTT. So I'm happy to bring you this special broadcast with one of our programmers, Angie Austin. The Good News with Angie Austin airs Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. So make sure and tune in to AM 670 KLTT The Truth, Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Enjoy today's special broadcast. Hey there, friend. This is Angie Austin and Rachel Maines. Rachel has joined me over the years numerous times on the program. She was a good news girl, and now she runs one of our stations, KLTT. Welcome, Rachel. Hey, Angie. Good to be with you. You know, I know a lot about your testimony from our years and years of friendship, working in TV news together. You were my floor director, and we were uh, prayer partners before I would do the morning show. I did weather, and then later on anchored, and you and I were friends the whole time that you know we worked together. And I also work with you, obviously, in radio, so that's been really a blessing as well. And now you're running KLTT, but I thought, you know what? I'd love to hear your testimony, because we bonded over some similarities we had in our background so does that sound comfortable to you since you're you know running the show now over there to share some of your story yeah thanks angie and thanks for asking me to share my testimony um i know that for sure the lord connected both you and i um and um he planned for us to be lifelong friends um, and I just consider you a sister as well. You're like family. Yeah. Um, but it was so interesting how um, when I got to learn your life story and my life story, one of the things that was similar is, um, well, my brother, you know, he got murdered. Um, and so we could we could bond over that. Now, my brother um, was an amazing man. He had a, a, at a young age, a successful um, company with my dad. Um, however, there, you know, there's addiction in the family. I'm thankful I never, um, had that, you know, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm just thankful I don't understand why. Um, but a lot of my family members, you know, had to really battle addiction and my, my brother was one of those. So, you know, it's interesting, got- not many people bond over a brother being murdered. That's a very rare thing. And your mom, I, I knew suffered, you know, dealt with alcoholism throughout, you know, your childhood. And my father did, and I was estranged for him for like 35 years. Uh, at redheads, you know, you're a redhead, your brother's a redhead, your mom's a redhead, your mom looked exactly like you, she was so beautiful, and I had red hair in my family, it was just little things, like we both went to University of Colorado, we both worked in TV news, we both lost a brother, we had difficult childhoods, I mean, it was just a lot, and we loved the Lord, so sisters in Christ right. as well. Yeah, I know, and how how special and precious, Um that you know, in the Bible it says that the Lord directs our steps, and never would I have had imagined um, a special friend like you in my life. But I'm so thankful that the Lord had planned that out. Um, and I didn't think, you know, going into news, I would necessarily meet you know strong Christians. And I was um, very thankful that um, there, you know, you and I got to bond with our faith and even pray, which was a surprise to me too. That we we're that we. Um, we were able to pray in news, which is very special. Yeah, right so, before right before the show, we would time, and that's I don't know if anyone's familiar with morning t- TV, but we'd get up at two forty five in the morning, and every second is precious because you want to sleep in every extra minute you can, and so you are <laughs> right. racing to get your makeup done, you're racing to get dressed, to, to brush your teeth. I'd even wash my hair in the sink a lot because I wanted my hair to look really fresh and nice. So if I washed it the day before, I'd still want to wash it in the sink, and it was like. It was like the Indy 500 to get ready for the show, but you and I would always take a few minutes right before the show to pray in the makeup room. Yes, I know, and that is so funny in news. I mean, if we had like a three-minute break, though, I was like, wow, you know, what am I going to do with three minutes? Right, you know? exactly. <laughs> the commercial breaks. Yes. <laughs> it's like, let's relax, you know. And But, yeah, um, yeah, so special, and just the similarities as well, and, um, you know, my mom has since passed and uh, went home to be with the Lord. You know, she did accept Christ. Um, but, yeah, in my my childhood was a unique one, which now I look back and I'm like, Lord, thank you. You, you really um, 
blessed it in many, many ways. I was raised by my dad and stepmom, and the foundation of my faith came through my dad. My dad is, he's just, he's everything to me. We're, I'm very close to him today. I'm so thankful, and we can bond over our faith and talk about things. I'm very thankful for my dad. He's just a solid rock. Um, and then my my mom remarried, and so I had a stepdad. So I had two families, essentially. And what was interesting is so different. So I got to be exposed as a kid to different lifestyles, different mindsets, a lot of different personalities. Um, when I visit my mom, um, and want to interject here, I was thankful to have traveled. My mom and stepdad lived in Bolivia, and there they had maids and chauffeurs. So when we went, me and my brother, it was like a whole different kind of lifestyle at, at a young age to kind of learn, you know, about the culture. And I got to see poverty, you know, firsthand with um, one day my brother and I, we were young, you know, we wanted to walk the maid home. We wanted to be friends with her. And she was kind of hesitant. We couldn't understand why. We didn't realize until we got to her place that, um, we didn't even think that she may have been embarrassed for us to see where she lived, you oh. know. So um, just these kind of experiences were just amazing. My my um, mom and stepdad lived in Australia as well. So when I was in high school, I'd visit. Um, so was thankful to for the travel and just to be around and exposed to different um, environments. And then very thankful that I had a solid faith and foundation with my dad and stepmom. So... Um, uh, but with the addiction stuff, yeah, I was kind of, I was the youngest, and typically as the youngest, um, you wouldn't have this dynamic, but for whatever reason, as a little kid, I uh, became rescuer. I guess I put it upon myself that I'm I'm going to rescue people. So that would look look like rescuing my mom, you know, maybe if I was with her and she was drinking, I'd, I'd want to, you know, kind of be the mom, if you will, emotionally. So, um just an interesting dynamic for sure uh and i now though the lord can use i can see looking back in the past the lord can use things for our good um every experience if we give it to him we can see that wow lord you know even though that was rough you use that for my good now and i i I, one of the things i want to explain with that is you know my parents got divorced and you know divorce isn't a good thing um, I know that the Lord wants families to stay together, but in my situation, I look back and like, you know, I'm so thankful I got to know a stepdad, and now I have my stepmom. She's just the dearest, sweetest friend to me, and I couldn't imagine my life without these people in my lives, and imagine my life different without these amazing experiences, because now as an adult, having been exposed as a kid to so many different situations, I feel like I'm better prepped to meet different people and different perspectives, um, even within my faith, which served me well at CU Boulder. And I, Angie, I know you went there um, as well. And, you know, it's just uh, to be able to learn and and glean from people of different belief systems, yet still hold strong in your faith, I think is priceless. Now, when exactly can you talk a little bit about, you know, how you became a Christian and the time like surrounding that and, you know, your experience with that? Yeah, so I became um, a believer at a young age. Um, I grew up in a Lutheran church and I went through, um, you know, the, uh, what do you call it, confirmation. And so I was kind of a unique bird at a young age, kind of stronger, I guess, uh Maybe not, I shouldn't say stronger, but my faith was really important to me as a young age. So um, I think that also probably played into my rescue role, if you will. Um, I mean, I had the Lord with me. He was helping me, you know, with things. And maybe I just uh, wanted to then, you know, show other people, my family members and or friends, you know, the amazingness of having Jesus walk with you. Mm-hmm. So at a young age, I would talk to my friends in middle school, you know, about the Lord. And we had deep conversations, I remember, as a little kid. I'm like, wow. <laughs> I look back, and like, wow, that was a really deep conversation for a little kid there. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, so, and then, you know, just being able to have a dad where we could talk about, you know, our faith in science and how science fits in and 
um, just kind of get really theological. Uh, we had theological talks about you know deep things, so that when I went to see you Boulder, um, I was grounded enough to even sometimes uh, you know challenge my professors. You know, uh, hey, you know, let's talk about this, and you know. I had one professor at the end of it. I said, so you don't really know? And she goes, no, I don't know. Wow. (laughs) Yeah, so I was just kind of a unique bird in that, you know, sense that um, I was strong in my faith in college. I had an atheist, one of my best friends, Travis, in college. He was an atheist, and we'd talk about um, things. And, and, uh, you know, to this day he's still an atheist, but... um, I, I, we came to an understanding that even though we think differently, um, we can still be friends and mm-hmm. we still, you know, love each other. So, yeah, I think we should share our faith. I think sometimes out of our insecurities, um, we we don't want to be friend or stay friends with people who think differently. But I think if we're solid in what we believe we can then be that solid friend or solid family member and always be there for somebody. They know how we believe, you know, and I, I do have friends call me from time to time who think or believe differently, but sometimes they reach out because they, they know that my faith is uh, my solid foundation. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I've always appreciated like you are, Oh, you're not, you're not timid about your faith. You're not um, secretive about your faith. You, I would venture to say that for a quiet-ish person, you know, you're not an out there, like really loud, I want to be the center of attention kind of person. Um, uh, you um, are very gregarious, but you're not, you know, like the main center of attention kind of person. With that said, you are not shy about your faith. And so I believe that you're outspoken about that. And I always admire too, like if people were, gossiping at work or you know something you'd say well I really don't want to you know talk about anybody that makes me feel uncomfortable that's not really it's against my values or that's not something I like to do and so you had no qualms with disagreeing with the surroundings because I found there was a lot of gossip in news probably in any office and uh, and if you're standing there listening, they assume you agree with them. And so you'd get this right. person that'd be like the cancer of the newsroom that'd want to talk to every about everybody. And they'd just be like, oh, well, I was talking to Angie and Rachel and we were saying, no, you were saying, but we get lumped right. in there and we're considered gossips if we're just standing there. So you're really right. one of the only people I've ever worked with that's just outright said, I don't feel comfortable, you know, gossiping about people. <laughs> Well, well, you know, and I don't even remember saying that, Angie, but thanks for for bringing that up. I know it's been a pet peeve of mine, gossip, and I always thought, you know, if, if you're going to be around a friend who gossips about other, well, definitely they're gossiping about you, too. Oh, yes, <laughs> you know? absolutely, absolutely. All right, well, you'll join me again, and we'll talk more about your testimony and just your experience. I, I'd love to hear about your career path that I know you love running the station, and uh, Matt was in the position that you're in. You're in now running KLTT for many, many years as the station manager of KLTT. And, uh, wow, I mean, it's, uh, I'm sure, been a lot for you to, to take in over, you know, the last six months or so. Um, I know you know you sing and uh you are very talented and you have your own show so how do people find you um if they want to reach out you can go to just rachelmains.com rachelmains.com i also have a radio show um corner cafe radio.com and uh, tell us when we can hear your radio show and are the podcasts up as well Yes, um, so they can tune in on KLTT um, Saturdays at 5 p.m. And then Angie, um, a friend of ours, is Biff Gore, and he just um, now started his own radio show at 5.30 on KLTT. Oh, so he'll be following you. Yeah, so tune into the 5 p.m. hour on KLTT. Oh, yeah, he's such a great singer. I'd love to hear him as well. Thank you, Rachel. I'll talk to you soon. Appreciate you. Thanks, Angie. Love you. Love you. Bye. Hi, friend Angie Austin here, along with a friend Rachel Maines, and uh, we love to chat about good news, and we always have. We've been friends now for close to 20 years. Welcome, Rachel. 
Hey, hey, Angie. Happy to be back on the good news. All right. So let's talk a little bit about your topic of the week. I kind of send you out and tell you to, you know, look into things and check on things. We've talked about your business. We've talked about being single as a Christian, which is a challenge as well as creating your own business. What's uh, what's uh, this topic today? You know, if we can kind of take a deep dive, I've, um, I've, I'm attending a new church and I love it. And so the topic kind of in the church and just something I've been pondering is the idea of lordship and what does Lord mean? Um, you know, cause in our culture, Angie, I think we've lost the meaning of Lord cause we don't, you know, back in the day, people had Lords over them, say in e- England and all that mm-hmm. but in our modern culture, we don't really know what that is really. What is what's encompassed in Lord mm-hmm. and I'm still studying it, but um, what I've come to uh, find out within that word, because we call Jesus is Lord, right? Right. Um, but Lord is someone having authority, complete authority over you. And I think that's hard in our culture because we are so independent in the United States. In oh, yes, I agree. <laughs> so um, I would just encourage the listeners, you know, study that word. What does Lord mean? How does that relate to our relationship with him as our Lord? And for me, it's just like, wow, eye-opening. And actually... It's freeing because, in a sense, um, we can kind of think of that, well, I don't want someone to have authority over me and all that kind of stuff. But when you give your life to the Lord and he's Lord over your life, it's actually very freeing because then you realize someone who is amazing, who created the entire universe, who is uh, the essence of love, who uh, is perfect, and we could go in all the things of what Jesus is. But just imagine that being now having complete authority and control over your life. Well, isn't that amazing? Now you can rest knowing that he is Lord of your life and he's planning things for your life according to his will. And as we surrender to him, it's a freeing mode to say, hey, you have complete control. Um, You have complete authority. And I trust you because you are going to do in my life what your will is. Mm -hmm. Now, how freeing is that? Extremely. Right. So um, I think as Christians, I know for myself, we've talked about my singleness before, and people listening have different uh, things that they're challenged with. But I guess I would say to enter into freedom, whatever that thing is, give Jesus lordship in that area. Mm -hmm. Then you can rest. Then you know somebody is in control of your life that is completely amazing, knows all things, and you don't have to stress, and you don't have to worry about that area anymore. But the one thing that you do need to do is just give up control. Let him have that area, no matter what. Um, So for me, in that example of singleness is, okay, Lord, you have complete control in this area of my life, no matter if you, uh, it's your will to bring a husband into my life or not. Knowing that I now have freedom to just rest and I no longer have to strive or worry about this area. So it really does give you a sense of peace. Exactly. And the irony is, I think we try to strive and control um, because we, we have fear of loss. So we think, and it's a lie of the enemy. We think that, well, if I give God this area, whatever it may be for me, An example is my singleness. For others, it could be maybe their hopes and dreams for career, or or maybe it's um, their kids. They're worried and stressed over their kids, or their kids are going to make the right decisions. Whatever it may be. The lie is uh, that if we give Lord Jesus, Lordship of our life, control, authority, that we're going to miss out somehow, or that he's not going to be good to us, or he's going to drop the ball. But that's just a lie. But when we enter into the rest, the complete rest and peace of just giving him control, then we flourish. But we have to be to a point where we trust him enough to say, yes, you are my Lord. Obviously, salvation, you're my Lord with salvation, but you're, you're my Lord in every area of my life. Mm-hmm. I trust you that your will is good, no matter what that is. Mm-hmm. 
So I think that the sense of peace that um, our Christian faith uh, and our Lord is supposed to give us, that we're promised, is something that so many of us overlook or um, aren't strong enough to allow in our lives because we are weak in wanting to control everything ourselves because we think we've got the strength to control it ourselves, but it adds so much additional stress uh, to right. your life. You know, if you were worried every day about how you were going to find a husband, um, which, you know, you've been dating, you know, per, since I met you. So it's been a couple of decades. Can you imagine spending 20 years every moment, every day, like um, on this site and I got to do this and I've got to go on this date and this date and I've got to talk to this person right. and I've got to, oh my gosh, it would just be exhausting. So you do right. put in effort and you know you have to do some of the work, but you trust the results to the Lord as you do the work. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> and, you know, I've been on online dating sites and all that. And um, But I think the thing is, it's just being in tune to, Lord, what are you asking me to do? And so if you feel a sense of striving in your inner being or a sense of a lack of peace, you know, that may be a red flag in your inner being that, hey, this isn't really what the Lord telling you to do regarding this mm -hmm. so just follow, follow the way of peace because I can say I had been in those situations where maybe I didn't have peace but I still did it anyways because I thought in my brain or other advice of people telling me no this is what you need to do but in the long run um, especially if you're God's kiddo uh, and, and you know another topic of, of conversation we could have in the, in the future is um, if you feel like the Lord is disciplining disciplining you or or you have conviction, if you're not walking in his will, that's a great sign. That means you're his. Mm -hmm. But if you have lack of conviction and you don't feel like he's disciplining you and you can just do whatever you want, well, that may be a red flag that you're not really his. So um, knowing that you are his, he's convicting you, he'll give you peace or, you know, all that. Mm -hmm. um, it's a comfort and, and we have him there to help us. So it's not like, Oh, I don't know what to do. What should I do? I'm running in circle mode. Um, and especially when you give him lordship over that area, then you can enter into peace knowing he's, he's got gotcha. you. And you he's know, help you. And, you know, our friend Beatrice uh, Bruno, the drill surgeon of life, she prays so much daily and she really feels a lot of uh, dire Michelle Ron, too, feels a lot of yeah. di direction from the Lord. And I've always admired that. The only way for me personally to really feel led because I feel my mind gets distracted too easily is to write write while, while I'm praying. And I feel like. Yes. When I write when I'm praying, I sometimes feel that I get direction by being peaceful because I'm writing and I'm not thinking too much. And then oftentimes right. I write down things that to me don't even seem like my wording or something I would have thought to tell myself per se. Right. And I do feel that's how I feel kind of the push of the Lord uh, t pushing me in a certain direction when I write something that I'm like, oh, that's interesting. That doesn't even sound like something I would say to myself, you know? And so th that, yeah. that to me, for someone who gets easily distracted is so beneficial. How, how do you do it? Yeah. And I have written in the past, like you, the journaling thing is very helpful um, for me. And I'll just be honest, Angie, it's um, I'm still learning and growing in that area because you know, just an example of striving in a dating life or, you know, all that. I finally am growing in the sense of the peace of giving God lordship internally, having that emotional peace and stuff about it. So um, that's something that I'm still growing in. I have journaled in the past, and I don't know if it's exactly the thing I, I like to do. Yeah. Know. And I wouldn't even call it for me journaling because I don't like journaling either. It's more like l <laughs> literally writing my prayer, like, you know, writing my prayer down, you know, and then just right. kind of free flow writing. And wait, there's one more thing, Rach, um, because we're almost out of time. Um, I, I had a little topic too. So I'll just cover this briefly because I think it um, really applies to my teenagers, but also my mother. Well, me too. And the articles about why we take things so personally, and um, I know you're a person that also has uh, strong feelings, me as well. And my mom takes things personally to the degree, and, and teenagers do as well, to the degree that 
she becomes like a professional victim. And I always tell my kids mm-hmm. that generally it doesn't have anything to do with you if they come huffing and puffing in, in a bad behavior, but we turn, uh, you know, in a bad mood and there's bad behavior, but immediately we turn, you know, towards ourselves, like, well, I don't deserve to be treated like this. And why are they doing this to me? What have I done to deserve this? And oftentimes you've done nothing to deserve it and it has nothing to do with you. And I, th- I think if right. we take that approach, we'll be a lot less offended in life and also possibly more effective in helping others through a difficult time, day, period in their lives. If we stop taking everything personally and maybe this kind of like projected onto them, why are they acting that way? Why why are they so upset? Why are they so easily angered and uh, right. t- take it off of ourselves? I remember the weatherman that was training me. He was real moody, but just a wonderful soul, but he was depressed. And I remember coming into work and he was kind of uh, quiet. And uh, I was asking him, you know, if I'd done something to offend him. And he said, it's not always about you, Angie. Hmm. And that really stuck with me like, oh, he's saying that his mood he might not just be irritated because I'm a few minutes late. It may have nothing to do with me, and he's just being quiet. It was kind of my own guilt that was turning it on myself, per se. Right. Yeah, I love that because um, if we can put ourselves, I guess that would be maybe empathy. If we can put ourselves in the other person's uh, world or at least try to think think about that, um, Because even in the business world, it's very interesting. Uh, I was talking with a client recently. This client is uh, well-known internationally and all that. And sometimes they'll get emails from people and the people will be very offended that they didn't respond within like 24 hours. (laughs) Right, right. And and we had this conversation that, you know, folks, folks need to think about the person and what they're going through, realizing, hey, we're... We're traveling the world here. Uh, we can definitely get back in two weeks' time, but that's as much as we can handle. Plus, we have other people helping us with emails. Mm-hmm. So it's just getting yourself in that perspective. You know, say I was the person emailing these clients, say, saying to myself, okay, these people are really busy. They're booked out for like years and years. Mm-hmm. I'm probably not going to get a response for a while here. I'm not going to get offended. Yes. You know, but you got to put yourself in their in shoes. Someone else's. Yeah, someone else's shoes. Absolutely. Well, uh, one one quote I want to read about, you know, not taking things personally. This is from Mark and Angel. That's the website. Note to self, even when it seems personal, rarely do people do things because of you. They do things because of them. You know this is true. You may not be able to control all the things people say and do to you, but you can decide not to be reduced by them or directed by them or adversely influenced by them. I want to make sure, um, Rachel, that people um, know how to contact us. My website that you made for me, actually, is AngieAustin.org, AngieAustin.org. You can contact me there, and you can also find our podcast there. And yours, Rachel? I would like to um, let people know about my radio show, CornerCafeRadio.com. Um, that's CornerCafeRadio.com. We have a show on uh, the sister station, uh, KLDC, and that's Saturday from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Well, you're the best. I love you, friend. Love you, friend. <laughs> Well, thanks for tuning in to this special broadcast of The Corner Cafe. I'm Rachel Maines. And just reminding you to tune in to The Good News with Angie Austin, Monday through Friday on AM 670 KLTT, The Truth, at 2 p.m. Angie Austin brings us the good news with great guests and encouraging topics.